Hello, this is Derek Pertubin for Public Speaking Term 1407, and here's my group of people. Hello. These are my coworkers. So today we're going to go ahead and do the presentation. So how many of us have gone to somebody and asked a question, maybe you were looking for advice on a big decision that you had to make, and how many times have you done that and you just felt like the person wasn't listening, they didn't really connect or hear what you were having to say, how did that make you feel? Can anybody recall a moment like that? I think all of us can, right? Do you feel like this guy? You know, like, why did, why did I waste my time? Why did I do, why did I try to even express myself to this person? They weren't even listening. I mean, how did, I mean, really remember that. Now, when you look in your day to day, how many opportunities do we have to truly connect with somebody? In our day to day, a lot, but not even just at our work, maybe our loved ones, our children, you know, how do we, how do we really capitalize around optimize that. Now, how many times do we really miss out on those genuine moments to truly connect? Are we even aware of these things? That's a question that I had to ask myself when I took a look at, you know, what was going on. And uh, I actually had a very unique opportunity to go to one of the continuing education events here called Mindfulness, a Pathway to Emotional Intelligence. And I got the mindfulness part. You know, I understood that, but I didn't understand this concept called at least I thought I did, but I came to realize that I didn't. And it inspired me so much that I checked out the book Emotional Intelligence 2.0, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about, because I think that the, the concepts that you can learn can deeply affect how you connect to a person, ultimately to help them get past themselves to reach out to the things that they want to do. And that, that's what we're here for. That's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, there are three main points that I want to convey to you about actually show how it is valuable. And one is the importance of mindfulness. The second is the concept of self-mastery through self-management. And the last is social intelligence or social awareness. And this is all within the theme to show you how mindfulness can lead to truly helping others. So the first thing I want to talk about is mindfulness and the importance of it. Now, there is an article in the Huffington Post uh, written by Dr. Susan Albers, and she interviewed Travis Bradbury, the co-author of Emotional Intelligence 2.0. And the article basically summed up that emotional intelligence starts with you. The ability to be in tune with your emotions and understand how they really affect you, but then how they affect others. And that's huge. And a lot of times in today's society, we don't really, we're not really taught how to do that, how to identify certain emotions. And, um, once you're able to identify those things, like maybe the checking out the, the, the frustration or just the, oh, I have to talk to this person, this type of person again, you know, how does that really affect what we do? And once we get a good grasp on that, then we can do something called a one-handed handstand. No, it's self-mastery. And in the book, Emotional Intelligence 2.0, they have a lot of techniques that you can actually practice to start mastering yourself and start managing yourself. And what this does is this helps us control those negative emotions, the checking out those impulses. Oh, you're interested in music production, you want to make beats, you do this. Uh, I'm going to check out now. I mean, are we aware of that? It takes that mindfulness to even be aware of that, to manage that. And once we're able to effectively manage ourselves in the day to day, what that does is, when, once again, it helps us keep those negative emotions and those impulses under control, but it also gives us a very clear, intentional, focused mind that helps us really accomplish our day to day tasks. Now, when I was doing the research on this, I, on the Talent Smart website, talentsmart.com, and that's where you can find more information about the, the book Intelligence 2.0. They said that 
58% of your work performance is directly related to emotional intelligence. 58%, that's over half. And for those who score higher on EQ, and there's an actual test that you can go to on their website if you get the book, there's a test that shows how you score and gives you a plan, which is one of the things that I felt were awesome about, about the book. But um, 58%. So self-mastery does play a huge role. But it's only through that clearness and that focused mind and that focused self that we can do something called social intelligence and that we can actually practice this. And it's through being very present, very, very centered, that we can actually pick, on those, pick up on those emotional cues in conversation that we have with other people. And that could be fear, it could be apprehension, it could be, you know, that, that thought of, ah, you know, no one believes in me. Do we really understand how those feel? Have we taken the time to understand how that makes ourselves feel? And then once we can do that, once we can be aware and understand the emotional impact that, you know, that, that emotional experience that they're having and how it impacts their, their life, then we can move on to the next thing which is something called relationship management. And I think that's most powerful, especially in the things that we do. See, relationship management is the ability to influence, to help, and to guide the people who we interact with into a way to, to basically achieve the things that they're wanting to achieve. Isn't that what we're here for? So, once again, the... The concepts in Emotional Intelligence 2.0, self-awareness or mindfulness, um, the, the aspects of self-mastery, relationship management, they'll add to our day-to-day. -day. They'll, they'll make us see things in a different light. They'll give us the, the, the leg to stand on when we're talking to, to motivate, to mentor, and to inspire people. So, to, to conclude, I'd, I'd like to leave you with this quote, and this is written by Jean Graves. And she, this is actually found in Leadership 2.0, another book that they co-authored along with Travis Bradbury. And I think this really has a direct impact on what we do in our day to day. She said, great communicators inspire people. They create a connection with their followers that is real, emotional, personal, regardless of any physical distance between them. Great communicators forge this connection through an understanding of people and the ability to speak directly to the needs in a manner that they're ready to hear. Thank you.